Hey, good Friday afternoon, everybody. It is Friday, August 14th, and it's afternoon. By the time you see this, it might be evening uh, or maybe even Saturday morning about the time the Coffee and Questions comes on. Anyway, so um, I want to do a couple things today. Uh, in the in one that I did, uh, oh, actually on the the LTS, the live training session, um, uh, I carved backgrounds, different patterns on backgrounds, and and I, I got a couple of questions, and I don't know why I didn't do it, but I didn't do a flat background, and that's kind of popular. Some people really like the flat background, the, the lack of texture in the background. So I'm going to do that today, um, and just kind of add on to that LTS. But I also want to cover a couple other things. I had a conversation with uh, one of our students the other day, and we talked about, uh, he talked about uh, the fact that he had his little DeWalt, the DWP611, that he used for profiling the letters, like I do, like you guys know I do. Um, but then he got a bigger router in order to do the background and the scalloping and cutting out the shapes and all that. And, and we've been, we've been uh, really talking about that for a long time, that we just use the little one for the detailed work. Well, uh, it never occurred to me because he said he didn't want to, uh, as in our conversation, he said he didn't want to overwork this router. And I said, well, yeah, and that, that is the reason why. Because when you overwork it, then things wear out. And, and it just occurred to me that way back when, back when we started, back in the 70s, Dad and I, we used to rebuild all of our routers. We used Black & Decker routers back then, back when Black & Decker routers would last 20 years. Um, and we used to put new bearings in them, new armatures, new fields, new switches. We, we could totally tear it down and rebuild it. Well, we don't do that much anymore. But what we found, and, and Dad taught me this, is that when your router, when, it, when the bearings start going out, and I'm going to give you a sound of what that sounds like. <laughs> Hear that sound? That means the bearing's going out. Now, I'm still using this router, and I'm going to use it right now for the background. But I would never use a router that sounds like the bearings are going out when I'm doing profiling or doing anything detailed. Because if you think about it, and... and what ha what's happening is those bearings are getting worn out. So that shaft uh, minutely is actually moving. And when that shaft is moving, even, you know, um, if you were looking at it under a microscope, it's going to be really hard to hold a straight line. So if you're doing anything detailed, use a router that has really good bearings in it or bushings, but it hasn't, it, it hasn't started to wear out. Um, because you'll, you won't be able to hold a straight line and your detail will just really um, uh, kind of fight you. The router, the shaft inside that router will be floating in there microscopically. And when you're trying to uh, hold a straight line and you hit any kind of a grain or anything, it'll just try and float away from you. Uh, any, any comments on that, Dad? No, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, and that's something we haven't touched on. Yeah. But it's... Uh, it's essential that you use a router that doesn't have the bearings going out. It's not making that sound because if it's making that sound, then somehow that uh, that shaft will be floating in there. Yeah, and exactly. So I I wouldn't. It, it doesn't bother me to use that. Uh, for something like this, this background, because it's not detailed. I don't have to hold a really straight line. Or for cutting out shapes. Or for cutting out shapes. Now, what I'm going to do here, so anyway, I just wanted to cover that because I don't think Dad and I, this is just something that we always knew, or I always, uh, well, Dad always knew. Uh, he taught me when I was like 12 years old. But um, So anyway, what we're using today is we're using our standard bit that we use for cutting out shapes. And uh, that's what I use for cutting, um, I don't know if you can get in on that, Dad. Looks good? Yeah. Okay, so that's the one that we use for a flat bottom. It plunges and it cuts a really nice flat bottom. So that's the one I'm going to use on this background here. Um, so that's the one you would cut your shapes out with, with the template guides and all that, that we've done plenty of videos on. So I am just going to get after this, get this done. And uh, I think that was really the only big thing that I wanted. Oh, yeah, at the end of the video, uh, remind me, Dad, i got to make the announcement um, for when the next uh, live training session is. Right. Um, yeah, all right, let's get this done. That's, that's all I needed to say on the, the bearing thing. Move this over here. Ah. 
I think it's set at uh, just uh, shy of a quarter inch. Okay, so now I'll go in here with my little carving tool and I'll take down anything that uh, um, that is not that I that I want to get out of there. I could have come right through there with that bit, actually. I apologize for the herky jerky motion wow. on the camera. I had one of the one of the uh, adjustment nuts was loose. And oh, I was yeah. trying to tighten it at the same time I was filming. Gosh, Dad, I told you and told you and told you about that. <laughs> Gonna have to dock your pay, Dad. Sorry. Uh -oh. Sorry, no, uh, no when, bonus. When are you gonna start my pay? <laughs> no bonus for you this week. Oh. Sorry, Dad, you're out of luck. <laughs> All right, so um, there's that. Now, uh, I obviously use pretty big letters here. I use two-inch letters. If I was using smaller letters, uh, like inch and a half, one inch letters, I probably would go with a smaller diameter cutter. Uh, this is quarter inch, of course, all the way. I would probably go with, um, you know, three sixteenths uh, if you've got to get in tighter spots. Uh, you, because that, those, those flat bottom bits will take out a lot of material in a hurry and they'll grab on you. So I, if I had to carve smaller letters than this, I probably would go down to a smaller diameter uh, cutter. Um, you want to hold that sign up yeah. so they can, I can zoom in on it. And they, and they can, oh. y'all very funny. <laughs> they can see what Sorry. it looks like when it's all done. 
Well, it's not quite all done. I got to spray it. Well, I don't it Just hold it right there. Now, if you've okay. got, if you're doing a big sign, you guys, this is something that I that I wanted to talk about. If you're doing, let's just assume that I've got big letters on here, and this is a big board, and I've got a lot of material to take out. In here, it really doesn't matter because any place that I go, my router base is on a flat surface. But if I'm if I've got a big, huge sign that I'm doing, and it's all flat bottom. And I'm doing a lot of uh, taking out a lot of material. Work from the middle out, okay? So I wouldn't start at one side. If this all had to be taken out, for instance, let's say I have a letter here and a letter here, and all this had to be flattened out, I would want to work from the center out and keep my. Um, if I'm working from here, keep my uh, my uh, weight or my pressure on the direction I'm going so that you don't end up working out here and then end up in the middle of nowhere and don't have any flat to at ride least, on. At least half of your base has to be on the surface. Yeah, wood. yeah. I guess that's the point I was trying to make. I thought you that was it. You just earned your bonus back, oh, Dad. Good, good, good oh, job. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So we are gonna. We're. I'm gonna brush this uh, and uh, and spray it. And well, I guess. Gosh dang! I didn't bring out the dip bristle brush. Uh, so I, I will come back in just a second. I'm gonna get the brush. I'm gonna spray this. And then we'll uh, sand it off. See what it looks like. Okay. So we now have. Uh, I got my my stiff bristle brush. So I just want to go in here and just take out a few of the little the little pieces with my. Uh, my little carving tool just to make sure that um, there's no no real high spots in there. They can do that with a pocket knife or yeah. or take a small uh, small flat screwdriver and sharpen it down and do the same thing that I, you're doing right I there. I just like these little carving tools. They work out really well. That's probably about what 20 years old yeah. at least. All right, so now I just got to brush that thing really good, just like always, just to make sure that there's no loose pieces in there that are going to come out after we've sprayed it and end up uh, being a white spot. So what I do with my ink. So now I'm just going to spray it. Now the thing about this, being as everything is a sharp edge, you got to uh, let me get the ink flowing here. You got to uh, you know really pay attention to your your shadows and stuff. Again, don't spray too heavy. Now this is a piece of the pine that I use, and it's got sanding sealer on it, so it shouldn't have any any issues with bleeding. But I don't want to push my luck. So now I'm I'm turning it over, and any you know little really blatant white spots. But that's it. That's as much as I want to do, right? There. I'll that's stop. probably more than is really necessary. Yeah, I'll stop now. Yeah, good idea. Okay. All right, so we'll be back in a couple minutes when that dries, and we'll sand it off. Okay, so this is all dry. We're going to go ahead and sand it off. I'm going to do my first sand with my, uh, my 40 grit here. Just take off most of the most of the ink with that. Now I'll just finish it up with my uh, my 80. And I didn't sand every little bit off because, again, it's just a sample. Just going to end up going in the 
fireplace in the winter time, I think. Maybe you could sell it to Lester Flat. Maybe. Maybe I could. All right, so uh, that's the demo for the week. Now, um, okay, so the announcement for the next live training session. Drum roll. Yeah, good, good drum roll, Dad. How about right. a little, how about a little applause? How about give me a hand? Woo All right. So uh, the next LTS is September fifth. It's a Saturday again, eight to nine. So it's going to be the same time slot, eight to nine on Saturday morning. That is Pacific time. Arizona time, which is the same as Pacific right now. So if you're on the East Coast, it's three hours different. If you're in Cyprus, I don't know what the hour difference is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but if you're in Cyprus, we're just sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I, you know, wherever you're at in the world, um, you know, you have to adjust. So it's 8, 8 a.m. Pacific time um, on September, Saturday, September 5th. So uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah. So I know a bunch of you that, that watched the first one uh, last month, or actually it was this month, it was the first of the month. Um, I don't automatically assume that you guys want to see the next one, so you need to send me an email. Again, my email will be right up here somewhere. I'll put it on the screen. So send me an email and let me know that you want to attend, and then I'll send you the invoice, invite. And if you didn't, uh, see our last one. Uh, we had a blast. Um, should be a lot of fun, especially the questions and answers at the end. I'm, I'm gonna. I, I've got in my mind exactly what I want to do, but I still want some feedback from you guys. If you guys give me some ideas on what you want to see, uh, let us know, and Dad and I will come on and we'll we'll do something. We're gonna do something one way or the other, but. Um, let us know what you guys want. If you don't, if we don't get enough feedback of, of you know, what we think was going to be the most beneficial to you guys, then, then we'll have some stuff in mind. So, uh, send me an email. Let me know that you want to, uh, that you want a, an invite for it. And, uh, and we're excited to, uh, hopefully we'll get all the glitches worked out. I know, um, I've got a couple little changes technically that we want to make on them. So, um, anyway, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning on, well, Saturday morning, whenever you're watching this, Saturday morning, the 15th, for Coffee and Questions. Have a great Friday night, guys, and uh, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye.